so I wanted to make a video called why, why Ozark or Rax false allegations against me won't stick. And so the sad part, saddest part about it to me is that it was a huge warning sign, like a red flag to me, that he has trouble confusing reality with his delusions and that might be partly opportunistic on his part but that he's somewhat is either a compulsive liar or a compulsive believer of his own delusions so let's go back in time to the origin of his false allegations i began attending the beacon club house late october 2021 By about November, I'd had my fill of it because I found his personality obnoxious and the upstairs very stressful. I also found the lack of equality between the two floors deeply disturbing. I had immediately found this staircase prohibitive as soon as I found out they were utilizing this old restaurant space. And that was highly concerning and highly disturbing. I began migrating downstairs to assimilate with the people who are not permitted to go into the clubhouse because they don't have access to psychologists, social workers, uh, CBH, or whatever type of referral would grant you access to Beacon Clubhouse or higher guidelines. So the downstairs is supposed to be low barrier. And it's very insulting because it's very drab, it's very uncomfortable, it's very crowded. Um, but it is also more remote from the upstairs where Ozark uses the open kitchen of the former restaurant. And um, there's less conduiting of traffic of deliveries to back and forth through the kitchen and requests and business and bill paying and all of that. So I'm downstairs. At some point, I, I would go back and forth. Aaron Carlson asked me to clean out the clothing closet and reorganize it. They had a protocol of, you've got to work, you've got to volunteer, forced labor, which I immediately took an initiative to clean the extreme amount of dust and debris off the stairwell because they had this pattern of running the food down a disgusting, very, very dirty stairwell, and I was concerned there would be like too much airborne dust. So that was what I did on a voluntary basis with my own eco-cleaning supplies, and it was appreciated. Um, when I was asked to deal with the clothing closet, I had problems with the fact that it's in a recessed windowless storage room outside of the larger storage room, which is considered the homeless dining hall. It's very remote, horrible feng shui, very damp, possibly mildewy smell, very foul. It needs a dehumidifier. It needs some kind of air treatment. And it's really not fit for human beings to spend much time in. It's very claustrophobic. The uh, people running around Beacon Clubhouse and Filling Bellies were saying, oh, we're out of pants 32s to 34s. We're um, low of this, we're low of men's boots, things like that. Basic things that they would need a lot of. Skinnier clothes for starving people, right? And um, I had a bunch of dental appointments to be going to in Portland. I ended up getting stranded down there during the snowstorm, getting very sick. I don't know if I had COVID. I don't know what I had. It was just the worst, most disgusting respiratory infection of my life. It was like really, really gross. My appointment was canceled. I had a transit delay. At some point, I'm back in Astoria, still feeling very, very sick. So sick, I'm not even bringing snacks to my homeless friends. I'm not reaching out and distributing blankets and doing all this little bits of things I like to do because it makes me feel good and because I like helping people and I like seeing their happiness when I help them. I had a flashback to 2016 when I met my friends who had nice jackets from Hilly Hansen and I thought oh that 
that clothing company, it's like really upscale, but kind of dorky. And I was like, I'll call them and see, do you have any of these things? And they said, oh, well, we already have a donation earmarked. We just have to get a final approval for a manager. And I explained to them that there are people kicked out of Filling Bellies and there are people kicked out of the Astoria Warming Center. I'm very concerned about the people who are kicked out of those nonprofits. But because it's your choice to volunteer your donation, you could donate it to the Day Center, the Night Center, or to, alternatively, the people who are discriminated against or 86 or trespassed or harshly treated from either of those organizations. So that was my pitch. I took that pitch to Columbia, Helly Hansen, the little one on Marine, I don't even know their name. They sell a lot of nice upper scale coats and things. They, I think, said they donate to Helping Hands or the Warming Center. They were just like, we already did it. Columbia said, oh, this is the best phone call of my life. Kelly Hansen said it's already in the shoot. And then the other company I remember contacting was the little vintage store that I now know to be run by Nate. They had some scraps. They find they were really the only ones who got back in touch with me. They had like, a good, there was a good jean jacket. It was just odds and ends of a vintage sale. I immediately took that down to the park to distribute. Rick wore the jean jacket, uh, this older man who's now died. And my concern to help people who were lowest in the pecking order, falling through the cracks, unable to tolerate the drama and chaos of the day center or the night center. There are people that don't feel safe at the warming center for people who were kicked out. So, um, come February, right after um, this incident where I'd bragged to Aaron that I was like dealing with this landlord drama, and Aaron was bragging on me, but I to Ozark, but then he looks really sketched, like, wow, you're powerful, or you're really smart, or dangerous, or something, because I, I felt that Aaron and Ozark, at that time, I felt that they were activists, so I felt like sharing my activist side was an important thing to do, because I was really, you know, I'm on the side of justice and poverty relief, justice for the poor, okay, so if anything, I feel that I'm more socialistic, more um, egalitarian about my humanitarianism and less profit-oriented or less um, punitive-oriented. So one day Aaron's not there and it there seemed to be a dichotomy between Ozark's behavior when Aaron is there versus when she's not there. When she's not there he's a little bit like a fish out of water. He's grasping at straws. He's looking for someone to pick on more than usual which he's normally pretty foul-tempered which is the first thing I noticed the first day I was in the building. I was like, oh, wow, you lose your cool constantly. You need some help with that. So when I called the clothing companies to get the clothing donation, I had already been asked to reorganize and help unpack what was left in the clothing closet. And the urgency of certain types of things was to me an imminent crisis. Add to this the COVID shutting down the Astoria Warming Center there was as long as a 10-day gap 